Listen while the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. This is your Rexall family druggist with a message that will save you money. Tomorrow morning at Rexall drugstores everywhere, Rexall's world-famous one-cent sale begins. From then on through Monday, October 23rd, you can buy two regular guaranteed Rexall products for the price of one plus one cent. For example, the regular price for the 100-tablet bottle of Rexall aspirin is 54 cents. During Rexall's one-cent sale, you get two bottles for 55 cents. That's right. Just a penny more buys twice as much. What's more, this offer of two for the price of one plus a penny applies to literally hundreds of items. From vitamins to mineral oil, from cold cream to iodine, from shaving needs to Christmas cards. And what's more important, these are Rexall products, and you can depend on any drug product that bears the name... Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Now your Rexall family druggist brings you another half hour with Richard Diamond, private detective, starring Dick Powell. Diamond Detective Agency, we can solve any crime but television. Diamond, stop clowning and get right down here. Well, Sergeant Lovelum, what's the matter, Otis? Didn't the zoo pick up your option? Oh, now quit that. You gotta get right down here. Something terrible's happened. They haven't made you commissioner. Worse than that, Lieutenant Levinson's been kidnapped. Diamond to see you, Captain. Hello, Collins. Sure. All right, Diamond. Uh, Otis just called me about Walt. Now, look, Rick. I know Walt's a personal friend of yours. He's a good friend of mine, too. But this is police business. A cop's been kidnapped. Diamond was a cop for six years. I don't need a case history, Sergeant. Oh, get off it, Charlie. I'm down here to help. Of course you are. But there's one thing I won't stand for, Rick. The way you operate. Well, what's the matter with the way I operate? I know how you feel about Walt, and when a guy feels that strongly about someone, he's liable to do a lot of things to get a few answers. Oh, for Pete's sake, Charlie. What are you going to do, hold a tea party and hope someone will spread some gossip? That's not fair, Rick. Well, if you think I'm going to sit back knowing that Bert Fisher's got... Who said anything about Bert Fisher? Well, nobody had to say anything. Pretty obvious, isn't it? Walt sent Bert's brother Art to the electric chair. Bert swore he'd get Walt for it. Fisher dies tonight, doesn't he? Yeah. Sure, I think it's Bert Fisher, too. And we're going to do everything about it we can. Bert's been in Detroit, hasn't he? Yeah. I've got a call into Detroit. Should be hearing any time. This phone call you got saying they had Walt. I didn't have time to trace it. The guy hmm. said Walt was being held, and when Art Fisher dies tonight in the chair, so does Walt. Charlie, I'm going to work on this thing whether you like it or not. Yeah, that figures. But I promise you, Rick, I won't save your skin if you get out of line. Hmm. Any leads yet? No. They're rounding up the usual stoolies. Well, I know a couple of boys who might have a few angles. Who? Nobody who would give you any information. These guys aren't stoolies. They might tell me because I think they like me. You see, Charlie, sometimes it pays not to be a cop. I'd expect any information you get, Rick. Oh, sure. Well, I'll see you later. Uh, Rick? Yeah? Be a good boy, will you? Uh, Collins, if we don't find Walt by 11 o'clock, can you hold up Fisher's execution? No. Oh, it's swell. I'll keep in touch. Hey, Diamond, do you think you can do anything? And I can try. Do me a favor, Otis. Okay. Get me a complete background on Bert Fisher. Everything. All his friends, his record, as far back as you can go. Gee, Diamond, I'm scared for the lieutenant. You're not alone with that one, Otis. In the Bowery, living in a broken-down rooming house, was a man. Twenty years ago, he'd come to the big city with his trumpet tucked under his arm. He'd started playing with little combinations along 52nd Street, and pretty soon the word got around. Everyone came to listen to him. They called him the Dean of Jazz, and the title stuck. Then one night he had an argument with one of the Fuseri mob. 
And the next morning, we found him in an alley, half dead, his face beaten to a pulp. It was a long time before the dean could get around again, and it was a lot longer before he could play his trumpet. And by then, no one would have him. He couldn't make enough of the horn, so he tried crime. And that's where I met him. I did him a favor, and a short time later, he went straight. He'd still kept his underworld connections, but he, he wasn't a stoolie. I'd just done him a favor once. Richard Diamond. Oh. Hello, Diamond. How are you, Dean? Like to see you. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of figured you would. Dean, uh, you ever run into a guy named Fisher? Bert Fisher? Mm-hmm. How about a drink? No, thanks. Skull. <sighs> oh, man, it's going to be hot today. This uh, Bert Fisher grabbed Lieutenant Levinson. Says he's going to kill him. I can't help you. Oh, Dean, I just need one little lead to get started. Yeah, sure. I wish I had a fan in here. How's business? Hmm. It isn't. I make enough to pay the rent. How about a few bucks to keep you going? I ain't proud, but it won't buy you anything. The lieutenant's a good friend. Yeah, yeah. Word got around this morning. Yeah. Here's ten. Buy yourself some groceries. Thanks. You... You did me a favor once. Forget it. Bert Fisher's got a lot of rough hoods working for him. They're most all from Detroit. But they kill the same as anyone from here. Mm Mm-hmm. Dean, do you know anything at all? I might. Who wants to die? Pretty good. <laughs> sure, me and Bix. Well, I'll see you around. Yeah, thanks for the ten. Oh, uh, Dean, about 11 o'clock tonight, play a few bars at the funeral march. Oh, uh, Diamond. Yeah? You, uh, you remember this tune, don't you? as any name can be. You got it, pal. See you around. Fifth Precinct, Sergeant Lovelum. Oh, this is Diamond, Otis. What did you find out? Oh, I got reports on everybody we know is connected with Bert Fisher. You want me to read them off? Anybody on that list named Mary? Mary? No. These guys are all named Hallelujah or something. Look, uh, check all of those names and see if Fisher or any one of his boys ever knew a girl named Mary. Then after you do that, I'll... You'll what? Holy smoke. I'll talk to you later. Dean! 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 The Dean had blown his last note. He was sprawled face down on the dirty carpet, clutching the shiny trumpet. A thin line of red was spreading out from a bullet hole in his chest. And the open window sent me across the room in a hurry. I looked out on the fire escape to see a man drop to the alley below. We both fired a split second apart. He staggered as my slug knocked him against the building... And then before I could try again, he disappeared around the corner. I turned, looked down at the dean, and wondered if Gabriel was getting a lesson in jazz. Diamond, I warned you before you left here Okay, that I... okay, Charlie. A nice guy's been killed, but all the crying in the world isn't going to help. 
Hey, I got something, Diamond. Let's see. Good grief. He's got the whole department working for him. Come on, Otis. What have you got? Uh, is it all right, Captain? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I should be in the second-hand business. Report on one of Fisher's old mob, Lou Baxter. Only one of the whole bunch who had a girl named Mary. Mary? Who's Mary? Charlie, look at this picture. Lou Baxter. I've been looking at it all morning. Oh, take another look. This is the guy I shot climbing down off the fire escape after he killed the dean. What? Holy smoke. You know where you can pick him up? Oh, he's a local boy, all right. Didn't go back to Detroit with Fisher. I've had a call out him since 1020 this morning. Hey, what about that girl, Otis? Name's Mary Sinclair. Uh, used to go with Lou Baxter, Captain. No address on her. Mary Sinclair and Lou Baxter, huh? Well, it's the first lead we've had. I'll get the boys on it. Charlie had his methods and I had mine. Otis got in touch with the musician's local, and in half an hour, I had a list of all the places the dean had worked since the union had a record on him. I started checking. Dives, restaurants, jam joints. Questioning owners, bartenders, waiters. No one knew a girl named Mary Sinclair. Around 3 o'clock, I wandered into a place on 52nd Street known as the Red Parrot. Hey. I'm uh, looking for information. You a cop? Private cop. Mm-hmm. You, uh, remember a guy who played here last year? Trumpet man, the dean? Sure. Everybody knows the dean. Something wrong? The dean got himself killed. Oh, no. See, that's too bad. Real nice guy. You ever know a girl named Sinclair? Mary Sinclair? Uh, no. No, I don't think so. Oh, uh, okay. Hey, mister. Yeah? Why don't you ask it? He's the boy with the fingers playing the piano. He knew the dean pretty well. Thanks. You, Ed? Yeah. What can I do for you, Pops? I understand you're a good friend of the dean. Sure, we're compatible. But I ain't seen him in a while. You looking for him? No, for a friend of his. A Mary Sinclair. Cute chick. Uh, where can I find her? Why do you want to find her, Pops? The dean was murdered a few hours ago. He used to live over on 47th Street, 69 West. But that was a year ago. You sure about the address? Couldn't forget it. We had a few balls up there. She was kind of a flip. We had a little combo in here, pretty crazy, too. He used to come in and listen. Real hep on jazz. Knew all the old timers by name, like the dean. Remembered when he was tops, before he got hurt. You ever hear him in those days? Yeah. I played with him a lot. Used to watch him real close sometimes, after hours. And the boys would just sit around and blow because they felt like it. The dean used to lean back and close his eyes and blow things like he was getting the word from the other side. It was great. Might have been the greatest. Well, you all got to go on ahead sometime. I guess it ain't so bad, though. The harp's a real wild instrument. I left the piano player and headed to the address he'd given me. There was a good chance Mary Sinclair wasn't living there anymore. But it was the closest I'd come to any kind of a lead. When I got there, I held my breath and looked at the mailbox. Score for Diamond. Miss Mary Sinclair still lived in the building. Before we continue with the adventures of Richard Diamond, here's your Rexall family druggist. And tonight, I have money-saving news. For tomorrow morning at every Rexall drugstore in the country, Rexall's famous one-cent sale begins. The sale where you get two fine-quality, guaranteed Rexall products for the price of one, plus one cent. Exactly how does that work? Well, for example, the regular price for a pint bottle of Rexall's Milk of Magnesia is 39 cents. But during the one-cent sale, you can buy two bottles for 40 cents. Why, that means... A penny more buys twice as much. Exactly, ma'am. What's more, you'll find some 347 of these twin bargains in our stores. 
Everything from Rexall rubbing alcohol to stationery, from Rexall foot remedies to Rexall dental products. Plus, 85 other sales specials you can't afford to miss. Well, I'm putting my pennies to work tomorrow. Then use a lot of them, ma'am, for every one of them doubles your buying power. Best of all, you'll be getting Rexall products, and you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. And now back to tonight's adventure with Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Mary Sinclair? Yeah. Whatever you're selling, I'll take a dozen. I'd like to talk with you. I'd like you to. Some other time. I'm busy right now. I'm afraid this can't wait. It'll have to, baby. Give me a call. Plaza 45466, Mr. Uh, Diamond. Okay, doll. Call me tomorrow, huh? You got your foot in the door, honey. Old habit. Can't seem to break it. Well, I'll break it for you, honey. Your whole leg. You'll be sorry, doll. Hmm. All right, baby, make it quick, huh? What do you want? Let's talk inside. I told you. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was cooler in here. The coolest. But it won't be for long. Where's Lou Baxter? Who? You know, the boy you used to run around with. I ran around with a lot of boys. Ever since I was in grammar school, I ran around with boys. It's a hobby. Where's Lou Baxter? Baby, I don't know. You want to twist my arm? Go ahead, it might be fun. He just killed a dean. He did? Shame on him. Forget it, Mary. Hey, Lou. Get out of the way. That's the guy who put a slug in me. Looked like you're in pretty bad shape, Baxter. Doctor's coming. But he ain't gonna be able to help you. See, honey, you should have come back tomorrow. Shut up. Well, wouldn't have been half so painful. I want Bert Fisher. Well, good for you. Get away from that door. Now... Walk into that other room. Drop it back. Uh, you didn't want to play. Oh, you shouldn't have done that, Charlie. I needed him alive. That's gratitude for you. I knew you'd get into trouble, Diamond. So I tailed you from that last bar on 52nd. Is this uh, Mary Sinclair? Charmed, I'm sure. Ought to stay here. Call the wagon. Right. There's a doctor coming up. I doubt if he's legit. Wait for him, then bring him down to the station, Otis. Right. Come on, Miss Sinclair. Sure, honey. You know, Mr. Diamond, I think I'll have to break that date for tomorrow. Here are Baxter's things, Captain. Watch, wallet, nothing much. Yeah, let's check the wallet. Hmm. Book of matches. Danny's Diner, Route 51. Check on that, Otis. Right. Nothing much in the wallet. Social security, driver's license, some money. Quite a lot of money. Want to take a look? Yeah. No addresses, huh? Uh, here's a ticket to a shoe repair shop. Well, nothing much here that would give us a lead. Mm. Yeah? Danny's Diner is about 160 miles out on Route 51. And guess who runs it? Who? Chino Amalo. That does it. Call the authorities in that area. Right. Chino Amalo. Mm. Eight years for armed robbery. Used to work for Bert Fisher. Yeah, maybe this is it. What time is it? Uh, going on seven. This better be it. We only have four hours, and you've got to drive 160 miles. Captain Collins talked to the sheriff's office and set up a rendezvous with him near Danny's Diner. Then we piled into a squad car and roared across the 59th Street Bridge for Route 51. Step on it, Otis. We're to 180 now. Then do 90. It's getting late. Now, Rick, uh, you think we should bust right in the diner and take Amalo? No. Amalo doesn't know me. Never seen me. You stake out your men around the place, and I'll go in. Give me a couple of minutes, then you come in, work on Amalo a little, and then leave. If he knows where Fisher is, you'll try to get in touch, and I'll tag him. Something for you? Uh, yeah, uh, uh... A cup of coffee and a piece of pie. You got raspberry, chocolate, lemon, peach, custard. Oh, uh, raspberry. Yeah. Hmm. Here you are. Uh, where's the closest gas station? About a mile down the road, but I think it's closed. It's after 10. Closes at 10. Oh, uh, thanks. Miss? Oh, miss? 
Yeah. Where's Tino Amalo? In the back. You want him? Call him. Sure. Hey, Mr. Amalo, someone wants to see you. Okay, be right there. Yeah, something I can do. Well, what are you doing way out here, Captain? This your book of matches? Yeah, that's the name of my place. Huh, these matches on Lou Baxter. Baxter's dead. Oh, that's too bad. You're not going to tie Baxter up with me, are you? Lots of people come in here and take my matches. If Baxter came in here, you saw him. You're an old friend. Well, sure, I, I know, Lou, but I ain't seen him in years. We got word your old boss is in town, Bert Fisher. Oh, is that right? You know where we might find him? No, I haven't seen Bert in years either. Look, Captain, I've been going straight. Sure. You're uh, a little out of your territory, ain't you? This is unofficial. You were in my jurisdiction, I'd haul you in. Look, I tell you, I'm going straight. I don't know nothing about Lou Baxter or Burke Fisher. Okay, Amaro. You may hear from me again. Well, nice seeing you again, Captain. Now, uh, miss. More coffee? Yeah. Where's the phone? Right over there on the wall. Is there another one? In the kitchen, but you can't use that. <laughs> hey, you can't go back there. Honey, it's the police. You stay where you are. Oh, okay. Jim, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Tino. Let me talk to Fisher. I... Hey, what are you doing? Don't move, Amalo. What is this? Cover up that mouthpiece. Cover it up. Okay, okay. Now, when you get Fisher on the line, say what I tell you. Hold that receiver out so I can listen. Look, friend. You I... look. Say one thing wrong, and I'll use this gun. Your cop? None of your business. Well, look, look I... Yeah, what do you want, Amalo? There he is. Tell him you just heard Baxter was killed. Hello, hello. Tell him, tell him. Uh... Hello. Look, I just uh, just got news that the Baxter was killed. Yeah? Okay, anything else? No, that's all. Uh, no, no, that's all. So what's the matter with you? Oh, nothing, nothing. Okay. You got any more news? Keep in touch. Hang up. Now, where's Fisher hiding out? <laughs> Get up. Where's Fisher hiding out? You dirty flat foot. You nearly bust my jaw. Only nearly? Where is he, Amalo? Well, you kill me if I tell you. That's getting late. Are you going to tell me? Okay, to... okay. He's, he's in a cabin about a mile up the road. Come on. You're going to show us. It's just around that bend. Yeah, we better get out here and walk. How many men has he got in there with him, Chino? Uh, two. Now, whose cabin is it? Mine. Otis, get out and tell the rest of the men to douse their lights and come over here. Right, Captain. Uh, here's a piece of paper. Draw us the floor plan of that cabin. Here, I'll give you some light. Okay, go ahead, Amalo. How many rooms? Uh, three. Uh -huh. Hey, we're all set, Captain. Okay. One big room with a door here, a kitchen here, and a bedroom here. Oh, where's Lieutenant Levinson? Well, I've only been up there once since they got in. He, he was in the bedroom. Now, how about closets, back door? Uh, one closet in the main room here, one in the bedroom here. Let's see, a broom closet in the kitchen and the back door here. Has it got an attic? I no, no. Where's Fisher's car? Uh, parked around the back in the shed. Okay, I'll have the men stake out the place. You're going to take me up there, Amalo? Me? He's going to take us up there. You're a civilian, Rick. If there's any shooting to be done... If there's going to be any shooting, I'm going to be in on it. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who said I was going to take you guys up there anyway? I did. I, did. I told you everything I know. I ain't going to get my head shot off. You're going to walk us up there, Amalo, and you're going to knock on that door. No, no, no. And no. you're going to get them to open up. Look, they're loaded with artillery, shotguns. When the door opens, you duck. Look, it's suicide. You heard what the captain said, Amalo. I'm a civilian. Without a badge, I'm allowed to get pretty nasty with you. Look, you can't make me do something I don't want to. I know my rights, Captain. You know something, Rick? I think I'm catching a cold. I can't hear a thing. All right, now, wait a minute. I'll go check the men. I, uh, trust you'll not take advantage of the prisoner, Rick. I couldn't hear if he yelled or something. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay. Fine cop. All right, let's go. All right, men. Yes, sir. Listen now. I'm going up with Diamond. Three of you take that side of the house. Yes, Three okay. take the other. Uh, yes, sir. You and you go around in the back to the shed where the car is. Yeah. Otis? Yeah? You and this man cover the front, but stay out of sight. If it comes, it'll come in a hurry, so close in fast. Yes, and look, boys, the lieutenant's in the back room, so try and be as careful as you can. Uh, all set? Yeah. Let's go, Amalo. Light in the front 
front window. It's ten minutes of eleven. I hope their watches aren't fast. Keep going, Amalo. Okay, Otis. You two drop here. Right, Captain. Good luck. What are you stopping for, Amalo? I, I just remember they told me to yell if I came up. If you try to pull anything... No, no, no. Honest, honest. They told me to yell. Okay. You stay here. We're going up on that porch. Count 20, then yell. And play it smart. I won't fool with you, Amalo. Okay, okay, Captain. But I'm scared stiff. You're not alone. Come on, Charlie. Get on that side of the door. <laughs> hey, Bert! Bert, it's me, Chino! Hey, Bert, I gotta see you! You alone? Yeah, yeah. Can I come up? It's all right, Anamed. Okay, come on up. Get him right back. What are you doing? Stop it! One going to the back. Take out! Okay, okay. Don't shoot anyone. I'm hurt. See you, Walt. Okay. Walt? Well, it's about time. Get these ropes off me. You okay, Walt? Yeah. Thanks, Charlie. What time is it? 11 o'clock. Happy birthday. Again, here's your Rexall family druggist. Once more, let me remind you that tomorrow, Rexall's mighty one-cent sale begins. The sale where you get two guaranteed Rexall products for the price of one plus a penny. For example, the pint bottle of MI-31, Rexall's famous mouthwash, regularly costs 69 cents. Tomorrow, you can get two bottles for just 70 cents. And remember, there are some 347 of these twin bargains plus 85 other super specials. Make your pennies by dollars during Rexall's one-cent sale. Tomorrow through Monday at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Good health to all from Rexall. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, stars Dick Powell in the title role and was written by Blake Edwards, with music composed and conducted by Frank Worth. Dick Powell can soon be seen in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer production, Right Cross, in which he co-stars with June Allison and Ricardo Montalban. Featured in tonight's cast were Wilms Herbert, Bill Johnstone, Sidney Miller, John Stevenson, Arthur Q. Bryan, Virginia Gregg, and Jay Novello. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Bill Foreman inviting you to join us next week at this same time when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Remember, tomorrow starts the four biggest bargain days in the year. Rexall's nationwide one-cent sale. The sale where you get two top-quality guaranteed Rexall products for the price of one plus one cent. Remember, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, and the following Monday, just step inside a Rexall store where you buy twice as much for a penny more. Your chime master, Robert Young, is expecting you tomorrow on NBC. NBC.